Well, guys, it's about that time. The winter break for all of our shows. I know it makes me sad, but at the same time, it does give the showrunners a chance to work on anything that just didn't really work in the first half of the season. Stuff that they didn't like, stuff they can course correct on in the back half. So in this video, we're going to be rant reviewing The Flash Season 3 episode titled The Present. So careful for spoilers if you're not caught up with The Flash this season. You've been warned. Let's get into it. So the episode's title, The Present, it has a variety of meanings, but ultimately it's about Barry dealing with what's going on in the here and now, dealing with what's going on in the present. And we'll talk more about that as we go through my review. First up, let's uh, talk about Earth 3 or the teaser of Earth 3, as I like to call it. Uh, don't get me wrong. I am really excited that Earth 3 is just a jump away for us. And this leaves a door open for more fun in that universe. And we get the trickster, who's more of a caricature of his Earth-1 version. Again, like many said, very Joker-like, which is fine. I thought it was very, he was very creepy looking, like the creepy clowns that we see, which I thought was what they were going for with his look in this episode. The dialogue in that scene was great too. It almost felt like your old-timey comic book conversations. Uh, it reminded me a lot of the Adam West Batman era, if you guys are familiar with that. If not, go look at some videos here on YouTube, Adam West Batman. It's very similar to that. I, I absolutely loved it. I really enjoyed it. I could have spent a little bit longer on Earth 3, but they had a lot going on in this episode, and all of it was very important. <laughs> Speaking of important, Joe's love life is touched on. He gets the girl, or at least that's what it looks like to us. It seems that his playful dating is becoming a bit more serious, and we even get a kiss in this episode. Now, I think The Flash does relationships better than any of the other DC TV shows. And what I mean is it almost always feels appropriate to me. And although we have had times where it's been a bit over the top, they get it right more times than they get it wrong. And this week, it was all right. In other relationship news, Barry and Iris, uh, there does seem to be a bit of a struggle holding this relationship together for the both of them. Barry's dealing with the Flash stuff and it's pressing against his relationship with Iris. However, Iris understands and shows compassion. This is great. I don't think we've seen anything quite like this. So I really enjoy that part of this episode. And this is the theme with them throughout this episode. And I'll talk more about that later on. We also get the much needed backstory on Julian Albert. Uh, about four years ago, he was out searching for the Philosopher's Stone, uh, trying to bring his sister back to life because she died and he wanted to bring her back. It began with him seeing visions of her, telling him to seek out the stone, very similar to the way that Savitar has enticed his metas this season. You know, you guys, they're, they're hearing voices and they're seeing things. Very similar to that. And to add to this, Jay Garrick does give Barry some backstory on Savitar as well. It seems that Savitar was a human after all, but became the god of motion. It also seems that Savitar can jump through universes uh, like we've seen with Barry and Sisko. So the idea that he can manipulate the Speed Force in much different ways, it does seem to be accurate from what we can tell here. So getting back to Julian, he finds the stone and starts to have moments of blacking out. And we find out that Savitar has been possessing him and possibly possessing other hosts over the years. So if you watched my rant and preview yesterday, you would know I mentioned that this would most likely be a case of possession. It just seemed the most logical explanation for what was going on with Julian, considering uh, his job with the police department and all the stuff happening around him. Uh, so this sort of takes Julian off the hook, but not really. I mean, he did find the stone and unleash Savitar into the multiverse. Uh, it seems that for now, the stone you know, is encased in a rock box of some kind. We couldn't get really any information on it. Cisco and uh, Caitlin tried to find out stuff about this box, this container that the stone is in, but they couldn't really find anything about it. Um, so in order for Savitar to be free, he needs to be free of the rock box and the stone has to be out in the world. Um, I figure they were tied together somehow. So it seems that his manifestation is symbiotic with the stone. Let's talk about that amazing fight with Jay, Barry and Savitar. Holy ish. <laughs> That's probably one of the best fight scenes we've had on the flash in a while. It was brutal. I mean, just completely brutal. Jay got his ass handed to him by Savitar. And then when he tried to run away, Savitar just grabbed him and tossed him back against the wall. I, I was on the edge of my seat in this scene. Also, I think Savitar looked way better this week than he has in the past. 
I don't know if they polished him up a bit, a bit or if the CGI was just a little bit better this week. I don't think he looked as out of place um, as he normally does in the episode. It also feels like Jay is sort of becoming a big brother slash father figure for Barry now. I loved it when he called Barry his sidekick. <laughs> that was just funny to me. Uh, so let's talk about Wally for a quick moment. HR has been training him, and it seems like HR knows what he's doing. I'm still not sold on it, <laughs> but we'll run with it for a bit. And Wally actually knows that for now, at least as far as we know, he is faster than Barry. And they aren't very specific about how much faster or if it's just like a figure of speech in regards to where he is in his training uh, now compared to where Barry was. But we do know that Barry's intro to the show is still a lie. <laughs> he's he still isn't the fastest man alive. And I giggle when the show starts up and he says that. Also, in regards to the episode title, The Present, Wally gets a present in the form of his kid Flash costume. So I'm sure we'll see him using that when the show comes back in January. So let's talk about uh, Cisco and Dante. In interviews I, I read about the, this episode, I thought for sure that it would involve Barry and Cisco not getting along. However, it seems that, you know, they did something really interesting here. They were using Sav Savitar's powers to give Cisco visions of Dante. So it was his grief that was causing him pain um, and not his situation with Barry. And I thought that was great. I really enjoyed how they handled that. Um, I can't be the only one who threw my drink at the TV when Cisco opened the box and let Savitar out. I wasted a whole Mountain Dew on that scene. Come on, Cisco. You're smarter than that. I'll chalk it up to him being emotionally stressed out, you know, and mind screwed by Savitar. Okay, so you get a pass this week. Uh, finally, let's talk about the final act and what we know about Savitar for now. So after hooking Julian up to the stone to make him a conduit for Savitar so they could safely talk with him, we find out that Savitar seems to be from the future or he traveled to the future. Uh, he has a lot of information on everyone, and this could be because of his access to the Speed Force in a unique way, or he has a version of powers that we haven't seen yet. Barry and most speedsters can travel backwards and forwards in time in a straight line unless they personally cause a divergent timeline and then they skip the tracks onto that timeline. Uh, this is why they can't travel sa sideways across multiple timelines. Sort of, you know, Jay sort of explained this uh, to Barry a few weeks ago. I'm going to make a video about it because it is very interesting how they can move up and down but not side to side. Um, Savitar seems to not only have powers to travel through time backwards and forwards, but also sideways. This means he can see multiple timelines of which uh, is something that it's other speedsters so far could only see as they experience them. So he's able to see these multiple timelines, these divergent timelines, without actually uh, being experiencing them himself. If Savitar can access them anytime he wants, this would certainly explain how he's able to give people memories through the stone since uh, Savitar and the stone seem to be connected. Also, it doesn't seem like he steals speed, not yet anyway, which is great. I'm, I'm glad they didn't go with that. Overall, just lots of great information on Savitar. And his motivation, although similar to Eobard's in the sense that Barry does something to him in the future, um, I'm going to say it's most likely him trapping Savitar inside the rock case. This putting the stone inside the rock case. It's just a shot in the dark. Uh, what do you guys think about this? Happy with Savitar's story? What do you think Barry did to him to make him so angry? Uh, let me know in the comments below. And then we have Team Flash. They come up with this idea to hide Savitar's stone prison in the Speed Force so no one else can find him, locking him inside the Speed Force forever. So I don't think this was their brightest idea, but it feels like the only option they had at the time. I mean, for us, we can see it coming back to bite them, you know, in the ass. Uh, but they probably didn't realize the implications of doing this. Like we know they probably didn't know. He is a speed force god, essentially. And so you threw him into the speed force. <laughs> Not really a great idea, but hey, I mean, uh, when this happens, we see Barry witness the future five months advanced where Savitar is still alive and he says that he has been set free possibly meaning that he is no longer tied to the stone and then he kills Iris in front of Barry uh, Jay reminds Barry that he is seeing a possible future this again leads me to believe that the idea of divergent multiple timelines is what the show is going with 
I really can't wait to make this video for you guys. I, I, I really cannot wait to try and explain this because I think it's so interesting. Uh, so we, then we have Barry struggling to deal with the news uh, that he saw, uh, you know, with Iris getting killed in front of him. So he goes out and he buys a house for Iris and himself, <laughs> which is very touching, actually. Just really great stuff. I also want to point out a few quick things here. Uh, Julie Greer, the name shown on the article that Iris was supposed to write in the future, is an Easter egg from the comic. She was a reporter during some of the Wally West Flash comic runs. Um, I say Easter egg because I don't know if we'll ever meet her on the show. Uh, Jared Murillo is Plunder from the comics, mentioned in the five months advanced timeline that Barry witnessed, which I thought was really interesting. Also, Caitlin gave them snow using her powers, which is probably reckless, but whatever it's it's the holidays <laughs> why not why not make snow um you know i enjoyed the holidays vibes in this episode now i'm not usually a big holiday person so props to them for making me actually feel the holiday vibe there you guys for me um this was as good as it gets just a great episode in my mind it's it's the best of the season I, for me perfection my final score this week 10 out of 10 that's right i loved it that much <laughs> What a change from last week for me. So agree or disagree with anything I mentioned here? Did I miss something that you wanted me to talk about? Let me know your score in the comments below. I really want to know what you guys thought about this week. I really had a good time watching it from start to finish. Just an excellent, excellent episode. All right, that's all I got for you guys today. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe if you're new to my channel. My contest is still going on for the Amazon Funko Pops subscribe, leave a comment to get entered. I'm picking two winners. And before I go, click the rectangles or the circles above me in the video and help support my channel. I real, really appreciate it, guys. Take care, have a great day, have a great week, and I will catch you later.